Hello everyone, this is Alice at Welding and today I'm talking to Michael Bond who is the author of Fans. So how did you get into the topic of fandom, Michael? Well when I was younger I was a, I guess I was a fan of various music uh, stars and but I, I never was part of a fandom so I was rather an isolated fan and as a writer I write about human behaviour and social the social side of behavior in particular and so just putting those two things together i just became interested in what it would be like to be part of an actual fandom and then the other thing is that the idea of of fans has sort of expanded from popular culture into other areas lately particularly politics um you get fandoms in politics now so it seemed to be a a, a relevant topic I and mean, what's the impact of that, especially in politics? I think, I think things can happen much more quickly. Um, so a bit of news leaks out and a lot of fans hear about it very quickly and sort of coalesce and subject gets talked about. And there's a there's sort of a big a big noise. So perhaps just the noise is 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 louder now um of course the, i mean my, my book is mainly about the positive side of 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 being a fan there is of course the the fringe more extreme side and the internet does feed that because it makes it easier for people to access information to sort of mm. feed an obsession if you like mm -hmm. and i mean one way in which you speak speak about this in the book the kind of nature of outgroup discrimination and how easy that is to trigger yes well so i mean pe people gravitate towards groups very very easily we, we all want to be part of a group and that that is a an ancient human impulse probably evolved in our ancestors hundreds of thousands of, of years ago it's it's an illustration of how social and cooperative we we are uh, as a species and when you're in a when you're in a group you tend to favor the other people in that group i mean and that's any kind of group it can be family a circle of friends uh sports team or or, or or a fandom or even something like a like a book club just just sharing something with other people on a uh what might feel like quite a superficial level it can just make you friendlier towards the other people in your group and one outcome of that is that you can feel less favorable towards right. members of of other groups that kind of comes with a territory but it doesn't necessarily mean that you discriminate against other members um uh, i guess members of other groups but if if the uh, social conditions are right and if you're in, if if you're in a, a situation where there's threats of of, of um, unrest or or violence or other groups are actually actively being discriminated against by the state for example uh, it can be very easy to to sort of fall in line with that so the potential is always there for for outgroup discrimination but it, it's not it's i wouldn't say it was a given for all groups and how what happens when people do establish a group then? What what behaviours follow suit? What well, tends to happen when people find others who share their their interests is this, it's a, a sense of enormous relief. Now I've lost count of the number of times I've heard people say things like, Oh, I I just it was it was such a great comfort to find people who shared my passion or you know I finally found my people I heard that, that a lot I found my people and they mean just they found other people who who shared that that particular interest I'm just thinking of one uh, a fan of Jane Austen of Jane Austen's works who I spent quite a lot of time with and she when she was growing up she was fairly isolated had, had a lot of problems at at school and used to read 
Jane Austen sort of by herself. And then in her early 20s, she discovered, like, she went to a to a, a Regency festival or something, and she discovered other people of similar age who also loved Jane Austen. And this was a, a revelation to her. And she said it it totally changed her life because she suddenly had a circle circle of friends. So having that circle of friends or or, or, or like-minded other people, uh, it can be a source of 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 just great comfort. I mean, the first thing is you can spend time with them, uh, talk about things that interest you, and it certainly takes you out of yourself um, in and and sort of um, spreads your your focus. And then there are lots of health well-studied health benefits that come from that. What drives that desire to connect with someone out of reach in the first place? I think it's very difficult being, surviving by yourself and being, being isolated, being, being lonely is a difficult state. And there's almost a compulsion that we feel to reach out to so that we stop feeling that way and you can speculate that that goes back to our early ancestors mm. when they were living being by yourself in that in a big environment with few other people around where there were dangerous predators being by yourself would have been physically highly highly risky and, and chance that you would not have survived so you needed to be with it with a group and that seems to have have stayed stayed with us so i think it's almost it's a sort of a psychological and almost physiological compulsion to reach out and, and find others and i mean the good thing is that it doesn't actually take very much to make a connection and the connections people have in in groups can can feel quite superficial. I mean, being a member of a, a book club where you know, the thing that you're doing there is you're, you're reading the same books as people, but, he, but he, even, even that can give you that sense of social connection. So I think that, that sort of helps explain why people feel such a, such a, a, a sense of a relief and gratitude when they do find that their, their people I thought it was interesting in the book about um, the kind of practicing of relationships. Maybe if you had a more anxious attachment style, that that might come into play as well, that there's a safety in the distance between a fan and, and who they idolize. Yes, I mean, that's another aspect of, of fandoms, of, fa of fan groups. You, not only are you, are you with people who you can chat to about the things that you love, but being a fan and following a, a, a particular uh, character, whether it's an actual living character or a, or a fictional character, you, you, you actually build up a relationship with that, with that character. And I mean, what you just talking about in, in, in the question about practicing relations, relationships in, in that space between a fan and a, and a star, those, a psychologist I spoke to who studied fandoms mainly in the in the 90s and and 2000s she got to know this fan a woman who's in her 50s whose husband had died and she was distraught over over this for for some years and was convinced she would never have another relationship and never fall for anybody in the same way again and she then got into the music of um, Josh Groban, who's an American singer. And she fell for him, basically, ha had a sort of crush on, 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 the, on the singer. And she knew that there's no way she's going to have a relationship with him. She's not even going to be able to, to meet him. But just exercising the, those feelings made her realise that actually she could feel that way about another person again. And 
that relationship, we, they call it in psychology, a, a parasocial relationship, which basically means it's completely one-sided. You're never going to have uh, a, a real connection. But she then took that into her real life uh, and understood that it would be possible for her to have those romantic feelings again for other humans. So it's for other people that she could actually meet. So that's an example of practicing those real relationships in a sort of fictionalized uh, environment. Interesting. Um, so why why is belonging so important to us? What's the kind of psychological thinking on that? In in in, in the modern world, obviously, it's possible to survive without a group, but it just feels very difficult in life to be without a group. Um, and we all want to belong, I and mean, belonging. It's difficult to to imagine ourselves alone. I think, but with with your when you're in a group and you have that sort of social identity as as it's called, it allows you to understand yourself in relation to other people. So, this is who I am because of the relationships I have with others and because of what I share with them. So it expands our 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 sense of of self in a way and and life somehow makes more more sense when you belong to a group it can of course give you access to to skills and resources that you don't have belonging to a group where other people have have things you don't but then there's this, there's, a, there's a psychological dividend if you like in addition to that mm -hmm. uh it's just better for our health all, all around yeah Yes. So whether or not you have something to direct your fan energy towards, it's about finding community in whatever. I think, yes, a, a, a lot of a lot of being a fan is about fa finding other people who share your share your passion. Finding community is what you, a lot of and most of the fans I I talk to immediately would mention the sense of belonging to a group of people who feel the same way that they do about a certain a certain thing um whether whether it's a, a, a fictionalized universe or or a pop star or, or or whatever just being with people who are thinking the same way that feeling the same way you do um so it's it's a really important part of fandom. It's not the only thing, but it, it's it's common to every fandom that I looked at across popular culture. 